Mental illness takes shape in many forms, and typically a doctor of some type is sought out for assistance. But rarely is the doctor the form of the illness. When news stations cover Malachi Alexander Love Robinson, the coverage falls into discussing his newest instance of impersonation. The comments form the narrative of ill-placed motivation, though hope to see him succeed. Yet both fail to capture the complete story and see the true perverse intentions of the 18-year-old quote-unquote doctor that masked his intentions with tears. His targets were even laid clearly on his website. His mistakes, more obvious in hindsight, make him more fool than genius. But unlike his talent, the crimes, mostly falling under theft and impersonation, were very real. So who is Dr. Love Robinson? How did he manage so many instances of impersonation, and where is he now? In 2014 in West Palm Beach, Florida, at the age of 16, Love Robinson went to various high schools, according to the Palm Beach Post. Not as a student because he was allegedly homeschooled, but he went to them requesting to be hired as part of a nursing program. Additionally, an email by the quote-unquote parents of Love Robinson was sent as an apology to one of the high schools where he was escorted off. It details that Love Robinson was being homeschooled, but did have legitimate degrees that could be provided for inspection. He even went to the school's district headquarters to ask for a job, where investigators were then called and he was picked up by his grandparents. He was then referred to an undisclosed hospital to be treated for an underlying mental illness. Fast forward a year later, Love Robinson was actually at a medical center, and went there by choice. Though that happened to be St. Mary's, a medical center that does quite a bit, but is primarily known for treating pregnant women and delivering babies. To roam its halls, one would need to look the part of its clientele or an employee. The former being more difficult, Love Robinson donned a lab coat. On one side reads St. Mary's Medical Center, Tenet, South Florida. On the other, just plain anesthesiology. Another important piece was a stethoscope which he wore around the neck. So him, with these two items equipped, we introduced Dr. Love, who roamed the halls not for a week, but for a month. Malachi was shadowing doctors, looking at procedures, and his status was uncontested. Have you had training? I have. I have shadowed many doctors. You're saying your training comprises shadowing other doctors. That's your training in medicine. Your training comprises of a lot of things. Until he was found in a pregnant patient's room and escorted off the property. Investigators found that lab coat, but probably because of his young age and that he didn't really interact with any of the patients, the hospital didn't sue. And the police determined no crime had been committed. And maybe that was the right choice, because after this, Malachi went to New Directions LLC. According to its Facebook, it's a brain-based treatment facility committed to helping people who suffer from Addy. Likely reaching the tax limit, they meant to type addiction. And on their website, they treat much more than that. In their private practices, they are claimed to treat virtually anything. Maybe even whatever is wrong with Malachi. And like the testimonials of patients that can be found on their social medias, they have a neat picture of Malachi in a suit on their website. Except that is found in the category of staff members. The only way we know what Malachi was doing at the center was because of a cease and desist that was sent to him that uncovers that he was at the center practicing massage therapy for several months, until he was uncovered as a fraud. During this time, he was also routinely showing up to banks to conduct business or cash in his checks while in costume. On several occasions, he tried to open up a business account with them but never showed up to any of the appointments. After he was sent the cease and desist, he was let go from his job, and as for new directions, it dissolved some time after. The thing about Love Robinson is he is clearly getting better in his deception and learning how to work people and his way up to higher positions, and he was suffering little consequence, largely because of his age, which in turn made the deception all the more juicy. Because as his age was protecting him, it was also making these positions people believed he was in more impressive, and patients likely believed he was a teen genius. It also helped that he presented a degree from Arizona University that presents him as a naturopathic doctor, that opposed to modern treatments, treats patients with pseudoscientific non-invasive methods like massage therapy and herbs. He also has a doctorate that he, for a while, refused to reveal its origin. Two colleges. Which ones? I'm not comfortable with this disclosing the names. This is where Perseus Wells comes in, a man that Malachi met through Wells' job of selling cell phones. And Malachi to Perseus was selling the idea of starting a clinic together. Perseus didn't have any degrees or qualifications to practice medicine. I wanted to ask him, you know, 
come clean. Is this is this true? But he did have $10,000 and was to help finance the opening of the clinic, where Malachi claims he put $3,000 of his own money that he earned from his time at New Directions. He even told Perseus that he wasn't an MD or medical doctor, but he was an ND or naturopathic doctor. What Wells likely didn't know is that Florida no longer licenses NDs. That is really only the surface of what he didn't know. As for Malachi, he was proudly promoting his new clinic that on December 11, 2015, he posted on Facebook that he started working at New Birth, New Life, Holistic and Alternative Medical Center and Urgent Care as owner, but more importantly, physician. Malachi also fed this information to other websites that promoted the idea that Love Robinson was Dr. Love. But what about Love Robinson's own website? That website looked quite professional, with categories that covered staff, contact information, an about us page, and services that encompass type your paragraph here. While this is all very impressive, few things prove legitimacy more than a testimonial. That is found on the front page by a Bettina, this testimonial is from a person living in Phoenix, Arizona, and Dr. Love's clinic is in Florida. Not only that, but he helped their family through infant, toddler, and teenage years, though his practice just opened. Reverse searching the images of the doctors on Dr. Love's website reveals that his website is actually a ripoff of Northwood Medical Associates PC that has the exact same layout and predates Malachi's own practice by at least several years. Uh, is that, are they doctors from your clinic? No, those, those are, are stock photos that came with the Do you the think website. that's misleading? No. They are based in Flagstaff, which is the same state as Malachi's single testimonial. On Malachi's website, some changes were made to fit Malachi's practice, like staff, where two women were hired to boast legitimacy, a program director and an operations director. As for Malachi, he was describing himself as a well-rounded professional that uses air, water, light, heat, earth, and various other items to promote natural healing like natural processed foods. Attached to his title was PhD, the title obtained through an undisclosed source. Additionally, there was HHPC and AAMA. Those two acronyms can be interchanged for whatever you please. As for the website, there are other changes made that have disturbing connotation like on the homepage that unlike the services page actually describes what Malachi was wanting to treat. This includes well child exams, well woman examinations, annual physicals, sport and camp physicals, adult and pediatric immunizations, preventative health care preoperative clearance. Some of these are questionable at best, but well woman examinations in particular consist of a pap smear, a pelvic exam, and a breast exam. Considering that he was previously a massage therapist that encompasses human contact and that St. Mary's, where he pretended to be a doctor for a month, focuses on women's health care, the crimes Malachi is aiming for are far worse than impersonation of a doctor. But at least this time, his history was catching up to him. Crime Stoppers on January 13, 2016 received a call from a person that is left anonymous. But the information provided in the report is so specific, the possibility of it being a family member cannot be thrown out. In the report, the caller informs Crime Stoppers that Malachi is also advertising himself as a 25-year-old. The caller also claims that Malachi forged two items, a medical degree and a certificate from the Palm Beach Health Department. Those are likely found in Malachi's clinic that is opening up. But the most important bit is that allegedly Malachi has been Baker acted twice. The last time was after the incident at St. Mary's. What this is, and allows in Florida, is the detention typically for examination for a person that shows himself to be possibly unwell, and can be held up for 72 hours. And so the investigation begins. With Malachi's history and the accuracy of the call tipping off the Department of Health, evidence and information is being screenshotted and captured. There was an urgency to this because Malachi in his practice was receiving patients, and who knows how they would be affected by his con. Luckily, Malachi made this very easy for investigators. On his Facebook, his position as physician is double underlined. The entirety of his live script page is screenshotted. SCNM, the college Malachi claims to have a naturopathic degree from, is contacted and verifies that they have no recordings of him attending. The American Associate of Drugless Practitioners is also contacted because they certified him. But that was also quickly voided. This is quite literal because the pages on the report are so dark. But they weren't the only ones aware of Malachi's history. An investigative reporter from a local news station was tipped off by a family member concerned about Malachi's actions, and did so in fear that he would hurt someone through malpractice. 
so she showed up to his clinic and found him wearing a lab coat that he quickly changed out of before providing a tour and possibly hid anything that could pin him as impersonating a doctor. Like this taped over MD on his list of titles that the reporter found. His excuse was that was a mistake by the building's management, which when contacted refused Malachi's claim. As for his certifications, when prompted about the colleges, he does surprisingly provide a bit of information. You know, um, I've done a lot of, you know, Christian training and, you know, theology and science, and, you know, I have done some alternative medicine courses and, and things of that age, which I have been certified by two boards to, to do. You gone to college, Malachi? I have, yes. Which college did you go to? I've gone to two colleges. Which ones? I'm not comfortable with this, disclosing my names. Did you graduate? Yes, I did. It's also interesting that he chose the American Association of Drugless Practitioners to be certified by, because their own legitimacy is akin to that of Malachi's, with certification fees costing nearly $300. But that isn't the only website Malachi visited to get his credentials. Investigators also found the source of one PhD, and is a source of his claim to be called doctor, but not medical doctor. The PhD is from another sham service. Pay $29.95 and you can get a Doctor of Divinity title, where the site claims that you, quote, will legally be entitled to use the title Doctor in front of your name, and DD after your name, unquote. This is purchased from Universal Life Church Seminary, and in the least, this will allow him to contact his patients after he kills them through negligence. Well, he might have if it weren't for the investigations and his willingness to do so many interviews with WPBF. He even requested them. A surprising call. He wanted to talk again. As for the Sheriff's Office investigation of Love Robinson, they've had for a while a tidy list of sources online that portray Love Robinson as a doctor. There are clients that receive treatment, which is a big no-no for the unlicensed. And they took it a step further. A sting was set up on February 16, 2016, and began around 12 p.m. An undercover female officer stepped in requesting an examination. She filled out a questionnaire, then returned it. Then a while later, Love Robinson asked her to follow him into a room. What followed was typical of any examination a doctor would give you. He checked her weight, blood pressure, asked about symptoms, and the works. Things get a bit weird when he checked her heart rate on the upper chest, but made it a point to move back and forth several times. After the examination, Love Robinson told the officer that she was fine, and gave the medical advice, which is very important, to get over-the-counter medication for allergies. Additionally, he told the officer that he suffers from lupus and kidney cancer, in which he treats himself. While in the exam room, she gave the signal for the agents to come in and arrest him for practicing medicine without a license, thanks to that medical advice he gave. A cease and desist was also provided the same day of the arrest to stop practicing medicine until he is licensed. But Dr. Love was caught, and this time he wouldn't get away so easily, because his story spread far beyond the local Florida news and was even on Good Morning America and where he walked out of the interview because of how directly, though accurately, they accused them of being a fraud. Are you a fraud? I don't appreciate your tone. Dr. Love even held a press conference that he was driven to by his grandfather, who also posted a bomb that was $21,000. Um, I just want to say that I am deeply saddened um, and a little disrespected uh, by some of the things that have come forth. Uh, but I will say that my attorneys uh, are working hard, they're working around the clock to make sure that this issue gets resolved in the best way possible. Normally, when such information is provided, you'd have your attorney next to you. But because there was none present, it was almost expected for him to reveal he is a lawyer as well. That was the general attitude, and even the county sheriff's Twitter was making fun of him, alongside the rest of the U.S. that were being exposed to this story. Few affected more than an 86-year-old former patient of Dr. Love that suffered from severe stomach pain that her gastroenterologist could not remedy. Paying him nearly $3,500. She filed the complaint the month prior, but she first made contact with Dr. Love three months prior in December 2015. It was then that Dr. Love agreed to help and examined her lungs and legs. This prompted him to diagnose her with arthritis and attempted to treat it with natural vitamins. He also guaranteed some tests, but she would have to pay in advance, and she did for five visits that in all totaled $3,494. Also, these tests never came. That's still hardly the worst part. On one visit, the pain was so bad he called an ambulance, but convinced her to leave her purse and personal belongings with him to leave at the house and lock up. That's when he stole an additional $2,794 from three personal checks. An important thing to understand is that much of this was being covered and revealed to the public mid-February. 
Cases like this attract attention and lawyers who are more willing to defend someone because if they do a good job, it's definitely something they'll be remembered for. Enter Andrew Stein, Malachi's lawyer, that started to sit in with him during interviews. He even said this. He has the entrepreneurial spirit of somebody like a Donald Trump or a Bill Gates. I've never met somebody, and I'm much older obviously, who has such entrepreneurial spirit. His lawyer was so confident in his ability, he wrote a blog about how he was going to defend him on his website. With confident lines such as, quote, Malachi Love Robinson denies all criminal charges against him and explained that he owned the facility and never practiced medicine in any way, shape, or form, unquote. His strategy also seemed to want to put his race into play, and was also going to argue that Malachi, in his white lab coat, stethoscope, and with his entire procedure with the officer, was not offering medical advice posing as a doctor, but was just giving general advice as to what Malachi would do if he was her. And expectedly, at the end of the article, he advertises his own services. This may have been a formidable strategy, if it weren't for the 86-year-old woman he scammed that was being added to the charges. And now, at the start of March, police found that not only did he take all that money from her, he also used her accounts for payments towards his Nissan. That just over $6,000 theft went up a lot more. Not to mention the money he was being paid when working as a massage therapist, practicing naturopathic medicine without a license, practicing medicine without a license, defrauding his partner, trying to cash in fake checks as a doctor, and fraud use of personal ID. There is a lot going on that just keeps being stacked, and because of this, his lawyer changed his strategy, and was somehow able to get him a plea deal of eight years in prison cut down to three, which means he could avoid a trial as long as he pleads guilty to some of his crimes, saving the government money and Malachi time. Or he could reject the plea deal, go to trial, and have a not so great chance at winning. But this seemed like too much for his attorney, as Andrew Stein withdrew from the case, and Malachi refused the plea deal. An article cites that it was because Malachi wouldn't return his calls. Now in comes lawyer number two, Leonard Foya, and the trial is delayed all the way to November, because he wants to look into the viability of pursuing an insanity defense, but also withdrew from the case citing ethical issues. What Malachi was left with was a court-appointed public defender. He'd need much more than that for what he was about to pull, because he was developing another scheme. He put together his costume and prepared himself, Though there was one issue. Everyone had heard about the fake Florida doctor, so he went north to Virginia and to do so cross state lines, which is something you're typically not allowed to do if you're on bond. At some point, he got into contact with a 73-year-old distant relative, not just by location, but their relationship was through, quote, her son's wife, unquote, and he considered her to be his godmother. At least that's what he told Cargar Motors a dealership that holds a wide variety of cars, including luxury, and Malachi was going to try to purchase one. He placed all aspects of his previous experiences here in the ultimate scheme, where he was going to have a distant relative co-sign on the car loan. Fake doctor uniform, check. Elderly woman to scam, check. Scam being used to pay for a vehicle, check. Getting caught, check. There were many things that contributed to this, he told the Cargar employees he was a doctor and his year-to-date earnings was $90,000, where he made $140,000 in the last year. He gave them his doctor pay stubs, but those led to a Walmart in Florida. He called this relative his mother, then his godmother. The woman didn't seem to know too well what was going on, and she looked physically disabled. The poor lady, she was basically disabled. She couldn't walk. The cherry on top was though this was in Virginia, an employee thought he recognized Love Robinson, and thanks to making national news for his prior schemes, he looked him up and verified that that was in fact the same person. What happened after he was identified was that the woman and Love Robinson left in waiting for the loan to be approved. But the dealership called them back with the good news that their loan was approved, so they came back to the dealership where he was greeted by sheriffs who apprehended him on arrival. There he spun them the story that he was there to purchase a car for him and his grandmother, though she tells it differently. She didn't know he had her co-sign the credit application for the vehicle, and was surprised to see that on there was all her information including her social security, which she states did not give him permission for. But this reveals far more. A check with her credit card company shows that he had purchased two iPads and a cell phone the day before at a local T-Mobile with her account. Virginia wasn't as gracious to Love Robinson who placed him in jail on no bond. But after pleading guilty, Virginia did cut his potential sentence from 10 years down to one. 
on the charges only relating to the Virginia dealership, of course. After serving around one year in jail, he was extradited to Florida to go on trial for his original crimes. There, he was offered a last-second plea deal and finally took it, and was sentenced to a little more than three years, and was given a year credit for his time in Virginia. That's not bad because that was cut down from any 90-year maximum sentence, though he did have to pay $80,000 to his victims. Just a few months in, he was interviewed by Inside Edition, and he spoke like a changed man. I 100% regret what, what I've done, and the reason being is that because, number one, I've messed my life up, you know, a, a great deal. It looks like the state also believed in Love Robinson. He didn't serve the initial time given because he was released a little more than a year and a half after his date in custody in January 2018. Now released in September 2019, shortly out of prison, he secured a job with United States of Fright, a broker company that connects customers to Fright companies. United States of Fright gets commission for each transaction. Love Robinson, going now as Alexander Robinson, was also receiving commissions as an employee of the company. But Love Robinson in November 2019 made his own company under National Logistics Division LLC. A new scheme was in play. This time, he was properly employed, with the deception being where the customers he was in charge of would pay. From January 2020 to February 2020, he had five clients pay their fees directly to him through Venmo, PayPal, or through his own company. According to police reports, he also double-dipped on commissions and stole an unreported amount through them. But it doesn't take very long for someone to catch on that $10,000 is missing, which is when the owner of United States of Fright confronted Love Robinson about a month after his crimes, where Love Robinson came back as apologetic and guaranteed the company's money back. This was already a tall order considering he had paid virtually none of the $80,000 he already owed his victims. This lie bought him a couple more months until, when out of patience, the company owner went to police and filed charges in November. Love Robinson was then arrested on New Year's Eve. About a year later, he was finally sentenced for organized fraud under $20,000 and ground theft over $750 but less than $5,000, where he is, as of this video, serving his new prison sentence of two years and four months. The story of Love Robinson is clear-cut in its conclusion. A reoffending criminal is a victim to his own short-sightedness in schemes that have no longevity. A contrast of a sort of talent and drive to achieve the image of status, but a severe lack of foresight to have it sustainable for even a month. His crimes, though typically falling under similar patterns of vulnerable targets encompassing the elderly or the desperate, usually had different motivations. In his initial crime at St. Mary's, there was no money involved, just the twisted mind of an intrusive teenager in a woman's medical center. Then, in his massage therapy, he was on payroll and had the benefit of money, though he also had the exclusivity of a job involving physical contact. In his own private practice, he evolved to wanting status and made it a point to flaunt it. It was here that he had a confidence so dangerous that he made the crimes he wanted to commit quite clear, only to be deceived, ironically, by an undercover officer. It was then revealed he was duping an elderly woman to purchase a car and then repeated that crime in another state just to get a car. His desires are impulsive and devises his plans to reflect what he wants at the time. Even prison hardly changed that. Love Robinson is the typical story of the con man, exhausting trust in every avenue, assuming identities all throughout, making it more difficult not just to keep on doing so, but also to assume their own. With that in mind, even those that know his history of cons believe he is able to improve and have made it clear he still has more work available for him.